One last effect I want to talk about with waves is the Doppler effect. That's the effect by which the frequency of waves will seem different to a detector if the source of the waves is moving or if the detector is moving. Here I'm using a web page that simulates the Doppler effect. You can use this yourself. There's a link to it on Canvas. I hit play and the stationary source is sending out waves in all directions. Let's say I want to have the source moving toward the detector. The detector is the green bar. So I can set the source velocity as being positive. And now you see it's moving. And so as it's moving toward the detector, that's squishing the waves. And so the waves are going to be at a higher frequency received. We can do the same thing if I just have it going in the opposite direction. And then as the source moves away from the detector, then they're at a lower frequency. So now what if the source holds still? if the observer moves toward the source. You see that it's shortening the time that it takes for the successive wave fronts to hit, so that's increasing the frequency. If the observer is moving away from the source, then it's taking more time for the successive wave fronts to hit it, and that will lower the frequency. What if the source is moving at the speed of the wave? Notice that all the wave fronts are just piling up on the leading edge, and you're getting a shock front. What if the source is moving faster than the waves? In that case, you'll get a shock cone. This is what causes a sonic boom. If an observer were, say, down here, when that shock front hits, that's when you hear and feel the sonic boom. Notice that ahead of this fast object, there's no, um, no detected frequency. You're not getting anything. But behind, it's just a regular old stretched out Doppler effect. So if we were to put the observer way back here, notice that the Doppler shifted frequency is just lower, but it's not ridiculous. It's not like, it's not a negative number or something like that. Whereas up here, we're getting a negative number. What if the source is holding still, and now the observer is moving toward it at faster than the speed of sound, or at the speed of sound? Well, you see it's just shifted up sound, but there's nothing particularly special about it. And then when the observer is moving away at the speed of sound, it doesn't hear a thing. So there's a very distinct difference between the observer moving away from the source at the speed of sound, and the source moving away from the observer at the speed of sound. Here's how I can understand what's going on with the Doppler effect. So here I imagine some source, which I've shown here schematically, is a loudspeaker, and it may or may not have some um, velocity to it here, saying if the source moves in this direction or in the other direction. The waves themselves are moving this way, so here I've got wave front 0, 1, 2, 3. Um, 0 was emitted first, and 1, 2, 3 later, and these are moving from the source to the detector. The detector can be moving to the right or to the left, away from or toward the source. Now what's the effect of this? If the source moves and the detector is holding still, if the source is moving toward the detector, then the next wave front is going to be emitted closer to the detector than the first wave front. The wave as it's received by the detector is going to have a shorter wavelength, which will correspond to a higher frequency. By the same token, if the source is moving away from the detector, it'll have a longer wavelength and a lower frequency. Effectively, the wave speed is faster than otherwise. Because the wave speed depends on wavelength and frequency, changing the wavelength or changing the wave speed is going to change the frequency.